We stand. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, 
seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives 
in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. On this Christmas Eve, we kind of develop these wonderful traditions. Traditions that make sure that we understand that the light will always defeat the darkness. And yet, as you look around and you watch too much television, you just know how dark it truly is. The darkness that exists around the world sometimes is just outright depressing. It makes you angry sometimes. It's frustrating. You wonder how many more terrible things are going to have to be blurred out on the news. This is life in a fallen world. This is life where we now understand once again why a Savior needs to come into the world and that he has come into the world. It is because of sin that we see these sorts of issues. And yet it's always easy, especially as doing as well as we do in the United States, we know we're incredibly blessed by the wonderful order that we have, and yet you've seen it blow up at times. You've think, seen things go wrong. You've seen riots on our televisions. It's a fallen world. It's dark. And yet, on this Christmas Eve, we do have hope and peace and comfort because our faith clings to the promises that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. Our faith grabs hold of what we heard from the Old Testament. Our faith grabs hold of those wonderful miracles that had taken place before. Sort of like John being born. When you're almost 100 years old or more, and an angel shows up and says, you're going to have a baby. Uh-huh. Sure. And yet, the miracle took place. It certainly was a miracle, but it still was between a husband and a wife. And John was born. She did bear a son, but it became a way to look forward. As John was preparing the world for the Savior to enter the world, so many things in his life paralleled what Christ was going through. It was an angel that told Elizabeth. It was an angel that appeared and made it known that Mary was going to have a child. It was the same angel that said, but do not fear. To Elizabeth, do not fear, Mary. But then, where does this all take a different turn? Between John and our Lord Jesus Christ? Sure, John was great as he preached out in the desert. He was told to announce the coming of the Messiah, prepare the way of the Lord. But then, as we learn that Mary was not married, and that Mary had no relations. She was a virgin. And that Mary was to have a child, and now the miracle takes place. Through the work of the Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of Mary. It is our Lord Jesus Christ that in that moment became so different than any other human being. Because he was God. He was a human being who was God. But yet, usually in our dark way of thinking about things, we ourselves try to make ourselves gods. We always like to grab hold of things and make our own decisions, which isn't bad. And we do raise our children to be responsible and make good decisions and live with the consequences of their actions, both good and bad. And yet... That's exactly why we need that Savior. 
This is why we need this baby in Mary's womb to be the Savior who is God, who will say, I will pay for your sins. Better yet, I will live the life that you are unable to live. I will follow through with all the promises. I really will get my homework done. Well, don't know if he had homework, but he certainly did study, and he ended up teaching those who were gathered in the temple. He was able to do what we often so fight against. We fight against our mothers and fathers. We fight against our brothers and sisters. And then it blows up and gets worse, and then there are wars between countries. We need that Savior. We need that Lord. It is why that we sang earlier that God will then hear the foolishness and those who think they are going to become their own gods, and he holds them in derision. And he speaks to people in their wrath, in his wrath. And he terrifies those who have failed before him. And yet, a great way to ruin anyone's life is to look to the Ten Commandments and crank them up. Not one of us could stand before any one of the commandments and say, I did it completely and thoroughly. We are unable to do such a thing. And yet he calls us to live out our lives as holy as we are able to. To live out what God has given us. That he is the one true God. That he has saved us. That he is the one who will be even able to worship perfectly in such a holy fashion. But for us, we have to trust that Christ is doing that for us. Why, even as we have been gathered this evening, what a blessing it is to come to church on Christmas Eve and hear the proclamation of the Word of God and hear all the promises of the Old Testament in these incredible hymns. And then the fulfilling of those promises in our Lord Jesus Christ and how John himself prepared us to receive the babe of Bethlehem. And yet... God still wants to know, can you come to this altar and receive his eternal gift, that forgiveness of sins and the resurrected body and blood? Can you stand before him in moments and say, I deserve this, God, because I showed up at church. I deserve this, God, because I'm a good businessman. I deserve this, God, because I really do love my neighbor, well, as as much as he could love that neighbor. And then we see how often we fall into these traps of sin. It is all of those things that God has taken to himself when we do our best, and yet, finally, he grabs hold of your life, and he says, let me take your place. When you stand before him, you stand before him because you trust that that forgiveness is cleansing you and making you holy. So that here in this dark world, you yourself can be declared holy, and now you hold the light of Christ. You hold the light that shines in darkness when you read his holy word, when you sing the beautiful hymns about forgiveness and mercy, and how God has come to earth to save us. You are holding the eternal light of Christ. And it's the light that enlightens your heart. For as we go through our lives, there isn't a soul sitting here this evening who could say that their life is always filled with happiness and constant joy. And things never go wrong for my family. But rather, we understand that Christ knows what you and I go through. When you are in your darkest moment, For those who are so dark and they feel they will never escape, they will never escape their sin or are still guilty and holding burdens for things they've done in their past, Christ has grabbed that sin and paid for it. When people are still feeling terrible and how come I'm still depressed? How come I still need medicine, O Lord? 
Christ says, I am still there walking with you, and I am the light in your life, and your faith is what gives you strength to carry on, and he calls you still to your daily life. He still calls you as Christian mothers and fathers and sons and daughters to be the light for your husband or your wife, to be the light for your children so that they know how to get through this life. And then when they bump into the curb or when they're knocked over, they will also know most importantly that they are forgiven. That they are forgiven because the blood of Christ has paid for the sins that Christ himself is the light, and that light never, ever goes out. It is why the darkness never wins against the light, because Christ himself is that eternal God, even in the baby in the womb, the true God, the true man, that one person, Jesus Christ, even as he was being raised by Mary and making his way to the temple and going through their classes, Christ himself was doing all of this work for you so that you know that someone has done it perfectly and completely. And so now, so now we can confess and we can be thankful and we can rejoice that this Christ is the child who is the Lord of all. He is the Lord of you, the Lord of your life, the Lord of your children. He is the Lord that has saved you. He is the very light that comes to you and gives you hope and comfort. It is why on this most holy night, what makes it holy is the proclamation that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Anointed One to pay for your sins, He has conquered sin, He has defeated Satan, He's even defeated death. And in his blessed resurrection, you and I now live our lives as he now calls us back to that resurrection, the one that was first given you in your birth. Yes, the birth and the water and the word. You've already risen from the dead, so we live our lives out now in this resurrection, knowing that still, whatever befalls us, no matter how dark it might seem, The light of Christ still shines. His word is proclaimed, and his resurrection now comes to you, feeding in this holy supper. For it is the foretaste of the eternal feast, and it is where we, the children of God, gather to feast on this Christmas Eve. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand. We confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. On this most holy night, in awe at the wonder and majesty of the Incarnation, and in thanksgiving that the Savior of the nations has come, let us pray to the Lord Lord, that the proclamation of Christ's birth would sound forth throughout the world, that God would give faithful pastors to his church to proclaim these good tidings, and that he would give his people willing ears to hear and believe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in all homes, that our Heavenly Father, who revealed Jesus' identity and Mary's fidelity to Joseph, would richly preserve all families with his word and grace to live in love for one another, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For good government, that God would move all authorities to govern in service to the will of David's Son and Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from affliction, that God, who sent Jesus to save us from sin's curse, would hear the pleas of all who call on him for mercy. And that he would rescue them from trouble and preserve them in the hope of the resurrection in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For emergency workers and all of those vocations, keep them from their families for our well-being this evening. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith and humility to receive the virgin-born Son of God in the signs where he is promised to be found, his holy word and sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have given your Son, born of of Mary, to be the Savior of the world. Send your Spirit and abide with us, that we may confess him and remain in your love until he comes again in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the, in the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when his betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me, of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just a reminder, as you light your candles, make sure the unlit candle tips. The lit candle has to stay straight. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.